What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures and today I want to take a look at this big boy right here. This is the Jackery Explorer 1000. And if you've watched this channel recently, you know I did a video on the Jackery Explorer 500 versus the Goal Zero Yeti 500X. And in that video, we mainly looked at how long would these run a fridge for overlanding, you know, putting a fridge in the back of your rig while you're out on the trail for, for several days, weeks, months, whatever. How long, if need be, would these run a fridge all by themselves? And in that video, the Jackery won hands down. With the Jackery 1000, this is a little different beast. As you'll see, it is quite a bit larger. Form factor is, is identical. Um, I mean, they are basically the exact same. This one's just a little more grown up. This one has a 518 watt hour battery inside. This one has a 1012 watt hour battery inside. So this should do twice as much as this does. This one also has a 500 watt pure sine inverter with a peak of 800 watts, I think. I, I can't remember. Um, this one has a 1000 watt pure sine inverter with a peak of 2000 watts. So if you've got things that run off of AC power, this thing is going to be what you want. As far as the comparison between the two, real quick, they both have AC outlets. This one has three, this one has one, this one has three USB-A type ports, this one has two USB-A's and two USB-C's. One of these is a, what's it called, a power, it's a PD port, power distribution, I think is what it's called. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit higher wattage. Unfortunately, this one maxes out at 18 watts, which is kind of a bummer because some of the competition, like the Goal Zeros, they have a USB-C PD port that peaks out at 60 watts. The Blue Yetis, they peak out at 45 watts. So if you want fast charging by USB-C, you know, running your laptop, that sort of thing, unfortunately this one maxes out at 18 watts, which is kind of a bummer. One good thing that I do like on the Jackery 1000 that uh, was a complaint of mine on the 500 is they've got the little, little dust cover. And you know, if this thing's rolling around the back of your rig, get, you know, dusty environments, maybe windy environments outside. I like the fact that that has a dust cover. This just lets all the things get inside. Uh, this one has an eight millimeter input port. This one also has an eight millimeter, but also has an Anderson input port for some solar panels. So that's really handy. And we'll get into solar panels here in just a minute. For whatever reason, both of them also have these janky little LED lights on the side. I mean, I, I don't know what you would use these for. Uh, it's not particularly bright. Um, and this one is just, I, I mean, there you go. Now you have a 22 pound flashlight for, for whatever that's worth. Um, these, these are not really very functional. Goal Zero says, meh, we're not even gonna put a light on those. Blue Yeti actually puts a, a good usable light on theirs. If you go back and watch the Jackery 500 video, that one ran our Dometic CFX3 55IM for 55 hours and 56 minutes. So almost 56 hours, well into two days. We did the exact same test, the exact same variables inside the house, same temperature setting, same ambient temperature inside the house, uh, two water bottles inside the fridge just to you know keep everything exactly even. The fridge is pre-chilled down to 34 degrees and that's where the temperature will be set. The ice maker is off. The Jackery 1000 is at 100% and it is now 10 a.m. on February 2nd. So unplug that on the wall that on and we'll see how long the Jackery 1000 will run the fridge. It is 1121 on Tuesday the 4th so it's been over two days 40 no 50 hours and the Jackery is at 44 percent. Well 
Here's the dilemma every time I do these tests. I think I'm gonna start it later in the day or late morning and hopefully it'll end you know, at a reasonable time. However, it's now 12.38 a.m. on Friday night, well, technically Saturday morning, February 6th. And I've been waiting for two, two and a half hours. And the Jackery's been sitting at 2% for that long. I thought surely by now it would, it would be dead, but it's not. So I'm either going to have to go to bed and then like set an alarm for, I don't know, 2 a.m. to see where it is or just stay up. I don't really want to do either one of those, but I do it for you. It has finally died. It is 721 on Saturday the 6th and it's dead. Fridge is dead. I do want to note that this thing spent almost nine hours between two and one percent. I could have gone to bed a lot earlier last night. This one ran the Dometic for 93 hours and 39 minutes. That's a whole lot of time. Just running your fridge, no other power sources. This thing did a fantastic job. Now, this is purely opinion, you know, take it for what it's worth. But if you are strictly, you know, overlanding and that's all you want it for, keeping your, your laptop charged, keeping your camera batteries, your drone batteries, your GoPros, keeping your fridge running when you're not on the move, um, if that's what you primarily need this for, honestly, I think the 500 watt is the sweet spot. These things have a great price on them right now. And you know, if, if that's what you need one for, I think this is the way to go. Now, if you need something more for overlanding and car camping and that sort of thing, maybe you want something around the house for emergency situations. We actually had a massive snowstorm that came through Arkansas a couple weeks ago and dropped a foot of snow on us. There were a lot of people that were without power, power companies doing rolling blackouts to conserve energy, that sort of thing. In that case, I think this is what you want around the house and it can do double duty for your overlanding trips and your car camping and all that sort of stuff. For both of these in the box, they come with this handy dandy little storage bag and they come with your standard wall charger. And it also includes a car charger, which is really nice because like the Goal Zero, they don't include this. Um, so that's real handy. Charge times on the Jackery 1000, they say plugged into a wall outlet. This thing will recharge from zero to full in about seven to seven and a half hours. It says 14 hours when plugged into the car adapter. Uh, that seems really long to me, but I mean, it's, it's better than not being able to. And on solar, this thing can accept up to 125 watts of input. Um, which is handy. And if you can get the max input into this, you can recharge this between seven and eight hours. Now, I know people are gonna say in the comments, but the Goal Zero, it can accept 180 watts. And that's true. The Goal Zeros can accept a lot more input than these can. The Goal Zeros are also a lot more expensive and don't have near the AC inverter that this has. So, you know, you're gonna pick your pros and cons and decide what works best for you. The price point on this is actually not bad. It's currently at $9.99 for just the Jackery 1000, or you can get it in a Jackery 1000 kit that includes two of their Solar Saga 100 panels, giving you that maximum input into this thing for, I think, $14.99, which is two solar, two 100 watt solar panels plus this for 1500 bucks. That's actually a pretty good deal. That's, that's not bad at all. So just for fun, I wanted to see what all this thing would power. So let's do that. Hair dryer. I, if you're like me, I love it when my wife goes camping with me. She doesn't have particularly long hair, so she's never needed this on the trail. Although since we've got this, she has said, ooh, that would be really nice. And we may actually take one with our, on our trip to Utah because we'll be gone for 10 days, probably shower on the trail and uh, she may like that. But if your wife has long hair, 
you know, they just take forever to dry. So let's see how this does. I have this on medium heat and we're going to go low speed and see what happens. Pulling about 425, between 420 and 430 watts with medium heat and low fan speed. I mean, that's not bad. Let's go high heat and keep it on medium fan. All right, we are up to 580 watts, 572, 585. Definitely putting out some heat here. That would come in handy. The Jackery 500, it will not run this. Now, let's see what happens when we jump it up to high fan. Pulling 1400 watts, 1422, 1407. It's holding it. Right around 1415. I'll see if it will sustain that. Nope. Nope. Remember, it's got a peak of 2000 watts, but it can't sustain 1400 watts. But high heat, medium setting, that'll work. Let's talk air pumps. I've got this one. When we take the kids out, we need an air mattress. This thing's super handy to have. Maybe you've got an inflatable kayak. Who knows? All kinds of things. But let's see if this thing will run this. Oh yeah, only 171 watts. That's not a problem. That'd be super handy to have. What if you're out on the trail and have a flat, maybe you need to fix a wheel hub, that sort of thing, happen to have your electric impact wrench like this, let's see if this would, would work for it. About 330 watts. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would come in real handy if you're out on the trail and need a, need a repair. What about a waffle maker? I think it'd be pretty cool to have waffles at camp. I've never had waffles at camp before. Let's see how that does. Starting off at about 812 watts, 813, 820. Okay. You can make waffles for the family with this. That much wattage does make the fans come on. I, that may be a thing, waffles at camp. What about a big old, just normal house blender? Maybe you wanna make margaritas at camp or whip up some salsa at camp, that sort of thing. Let's see how this goes. All right, that was really loud. I'm very impressed. Only about 360 watts out of this thing. So you could actually run this off the 500, but uh, you could run it longer off of this. What about power tools? Maybe you work somewhere remotely and you know use battery powered tools, but those go out. Uh, so maybe keep a, a backup like this. Will this run one of these? Let's find out. So loud. Yeah, had a peak of about a thousand watts, but then dropped down to around 600 watts when I was running it. So, I mean, yeah, you can make that work. We covered waffles. What about pancakes? Starting out at 900 watts, 999. Wow, let's pull a lot of power. So 980, 990 is about where that's settling. I'm sure once it gets up to temperature, it'll kind of level out there. So you're only gonna get, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes to an hour of run time, you know, for cooking pancakes, but in a pinch, maybe you lost your griddle for your stove. Maybe you ran out of propane while you're out camping. Um, this could work. 
I mean, you can at least have pancakes. Everybody likes pancakes. If there's no power, what about using it to back up your home fridge? Let's see. This is emergencies. Obviously, this is going to be cycling on and off with the compressor. Nope, never mind. Our fridge just tripped the breaker. I don't think this is going to work. Of course, it's going to depend on what fridge you have. Yeah, it's starting off popping up with a peak. 1300 watts. Let's see what happens when the compressor kicks on. Right now it's sitting at 190 watts. Just open the door to the fridge. I'm not sure what that initial spike is, but it looks like the compressor is on in the fridge and it's pulling 194 watts. So with the compressor cycling on and off, it might buy you a day. Let's see if this thing will power a toaster. Because if there's no power and you're freezing to death, you would want some toast, right? Okay. About 970 watts. You could make a good bit of toast with this. I mean, and if you're out on an overlanding trip and you just really have to have a toaster, there you go. As I was setting this stuff up, I got to thinking, you know, we have our camper and on top of the camper is an air conditioner. The air conditioner on the camper will not work off just battery power alone. You have to be either plugged into a generator or plugged into shore power to use the air conditioner and the heater inside. And so it got me wondering, will the air conditioner run off of this? Because if so, that will be a game changer. Let's find out. Let's put that right there. I'm gonna plug the shore power cord into this with an extension cord. And I'm gonna turn the air conditioner on and see what happens. Hmm. This is awesome. Right now it's on low cool and it's pulling 113 watts. So if we're camped out maybe in Utah in the desert and it's hot at night and we're sleeping in here, we could run the air conditioner all night long and be very comfortable. Let's turn it up to high. On high, it's pulling about 170 watts, 163. This is going to be awesome. What about the heater? All right, the heater's on, 1500 watts. I don't think it's going to go. It's staying about 1500 watts. Nope. Nope. It tripped it. So it will run the air conditioner on both high and low, but it will not run the heater because that just draws too much power. But I'm super excited that this thing will run the air conditioner. All right, I've got both Solar Saga 100 panels out. They're in direct sunlight. It's temperatures 
about 60 degrees, so it should be ideal. Let's, uh, let's plug one of these in and see what kind of input we get. And then let's plug both of them in and see what happens. That one's putting out 79 watts to 80 watts, which is really what you would expect. So at 80 watts, if the Jackery were completely drained, you're looking at, what, 15, 16 hours to fully recharge this. All right, let's plug both of these up together and see what we can get. And Jackery says this has a max input of 125 watts, which should recharge it in about eight-ish hours. And for this purpose, they give you this adapter to plug both eight millimeters in, and then you can plug in to the Anderson port. Let's see what happens here. We're climbing, we're settling in at about 120 watts, 123, 122. So almost right there at that 125 watt max input. Going with two panels is definitely the way to go if you need maximum input. If you don't need maximum input, maybe I'd just go one panel, but you know, if you need the maximum input to recharge this thing, two panels is definitely the way to go. Now, I think there may be some efficiencies, like if it was a cloudy day right now, maybe I would get stick with that closer to 125 watts input with less input into the panels. I'm not sure how that works. I'm new to solar, so this is just me checking this out but uh, yeah, there may be some benefit there. But it does give you what Jackery says it will. So in about eight-ish hours, I can have this thing recharged if it was completely drained. That's pretty handy. Well, I hope you found that helpful walking through the specs of the Jackery, checking out the solar panels, doing some real-world tests on what you can run off this thing. But what it all boils down to is, which one should you get? the 500 watt or the 1000 watt. And that's just gonna depend on what you need. Do you only need it for running your fridge, keeping your electronics charged and everything running while you're on the trail? If that's the case, I'd go with the 500. But if you have higher power needs, maybe running the air conditioner on your camper, maybe running some power tools, maybe running you know, the hair dryer for your wife, maybe you know, bringing some home appliances, like a blender and stuff, to make margaritas at camp, then you want the 1000. This one just can't handle all that. Bottom line, it depends on your needs, but I am super excited to have both because with this one, I can throw it in the back of my Jeep, hit the trails for a long weekend or whatever, and know that this thing's gonna keep my electronics charged and other you know, lights and stuff like that running. But I'm really glad to have this one because when we're out in Utah for 10 days this summer, this puppy's going with us. And I think there's definitely a case for this as far as, you know, home disaster, emergency, power outage, that type of situation. So they're both fantastic. Whichever one you should get really just depends on your needs. I'll let you make that decision. Jackery does have great prices on both of these right now. There is an affiliate link in the description if you would like to buy one of these from Jackery's websites or from Amazon, um, hit that up because by doing so it helps the channel and helps me keep making these hopefully helpful videos for you. But anyway, if you found this video helpful, give it a like. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. I've got more tests like this coming out. I get a lot of feedback saying that these things are incredibly helpful. I'm not, an electrical guru. I'm not going to dig into all the wattages and voltages and inputs and outputs of these things. I'm just going to give you real world examples of what they can power, how long they'll take to charge, what you can do with them, that sort of thing. So hopefully that's helpful to you. But anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.